During the next half hour, we'll talk with Cardinal Blaise Supich about the outreach efforts underway by the Catholic Church to help people in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll show you how online masses have become a common way of worship, and we'll give you a sampling of how teachers and students in Catholic schools are being creative and productive during the health crisis. Welcome to the latest edition of Catholic Chicago. The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Hello, I'm Todd Williamson, Director of the Office for Divine Worship with the Archdiocese of Chicago. Joining me is Cardinal Blaise Supich, and today we are definitely social distancing. I'm in our Quigley Center TV studio, and the Cardinal is in the library at the University of St. Mary of the Lake Mundelein Seminary. Cardinal, good morning. Good morning. It's good to, it's good to be with Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Good to be with you. Yeah, there's a, a brand new way, but I'm um, doing well with it, right? That's right, and of course, I'm in this beautiful room, the Mackesee Library uh, portion of the University of Mund Mundelein Seminary uh, Library, and it's just, uh, it's very nice setting to be in. You, you, you've got the better stick here because I'm just downstairs in the studio. <laughs> Cardinal, you recently announced agreement with the state on a plan to gradually and safely reopen our worship spaces. Tell us about that. Well, it was uh, crafted by all of the bishops uh, in the state of Illinois. We decided that we needed to work in unity as uh, we look for a way to safeguard our people, but also do it in a way that was in conformity with the uh, uh, rules of the government. And so it took uh, some days, some weeks for us to uh, hammer that out. And we believe that we, we've been uh, able to achieve a very precise procedure uh, with uh, a number of stages, which we're now beginning this weekend, uh, with um, uh, the opening of our churches for small groups, for uh, weddings, baptisms, and funerals, and then private prayer, and then eventually opening them up for weekday mass and, and weekend masses for larger groups. That, that, that is going to be so, such welcome news to so many of our people. It will be, and also to our pastors. Uh, we all miss our people, and I think it's important to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is we knew that we had to do this in a way that builds a real culture of safety and safeguarding. Uh, we cannot take any of this for granted, and we can't take for granted that people are just going to storm our doors. People are afraid yet, and we're going to have to earn their trust. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, 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 I think it's very important how often you have tied the process to, this, this, is, this is responsible action on our part, right? I mean, this is, this is something that we as leaders are responsible for. We are, and I think it's also a responsibility of everyone. Uh, we're called to be good citizens at this time, uh, to play our part in the state to, for making sure that this contagion does not spread. Uh, but also that we uh, keep in mind what we hear from the first pages of Scripture, that we are our brother's keeper. Right, right. And, and it, it will be a shock to our people uh, at first. There will be markings on the floor uh, indicating where to stand. There will be markings on the pews indicating where to sit. It's going to look and it's going to be different than what they remembered. That's right. And I think the other thing is that we're going to have to make sure that people in the church are trained to receive folks, but also to do the disinfecting after each of the ceremonies. Uh, that takes some time, and it also takes time for the pastors to acquire all of the uh, protective gear and the cleansing gear, gear uh, for uh, churches to open. And they're doing it very yeah. quickly, and we've already done the training on Monday and Tuesday, and uh, so we're, going, we're ready to go ahead. Yeah, I, I think one of the most phenomenal aspects of this, Cardinal, is that the bishops of Illinois of the state came together on this. It is. It's a way uh, to express our collegiality of our unity. And we wanted to also send a signal to our people that when we can work together from our various backgrounds and our different dioceses, uh, that it should be a signal to everyone that this is a time for our country, for our church, everyone in our city and state to pull together. Uh, that's the only way this contagion is going to uh, be overcome. While we're apart, we should not be divided. It literally is 
coming together in communion that will do this successfully. That's right, and that is the nature of the church. Uh, we exist in communion because we are a sign uh, and a sacrament of the union of God. Even our response to a pandemic is rooted in our faith and communion, right? That's exactly right. And we should not be afraid to take up this challenge uh, and surely not allow it to divide us to the point where uh, we do not uh, look out for each other or pay attention to the needs of the, the most vulnerable in our midst. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, an, an important moment to be sure. Uh, Cardinal, the church has been doing an excellent job reaching out to those who've been deeply affected by the health crisis. Now, one example here at home, St. Mary of the Lake Parish on Chicago's north side, is distributing tens of thousands of pounds of food to people in need, mostly members of Chicago's immigrant and refugee communities. Now, videographer Javier Garcia captured the highlights at one of the Sunday pop-up food pantries. We're gonna show that right Great. now. Great. You know, this is the church being the church. Uh, you know, Jesus told us, you know, that wherever there was anyone hungry, that he would be in that present, in that person. And what we have done is just bring, bringing the gospel alive uh, in a very concrete way during a very difficult time. Uh, this is nothing extraordinary in my perspective. This is what the church is meant to do, be the church uh, during difficult times. We are really ramping up our efforts at the Greater Chicago Food Depository. On Friday alone, we shipped out close to 500,000 pounds of food. That food went to partner organizations, food pantries, soup kitchens, shelters, all across Cook County. Today, we have 1,500 boxes that have been packed by volunteers at the Greater Chicago Food Depository, ready to go for the people who show up. Well, in particular among the immigrant community, which is already uh, skittish about coming forward, uh, the virus has compounded uh, that fear and that anxiety. So at the pop-up pantry here at St. Mary of the Lake, the only question uh, that anyone asks is, how can we help you? Uh, there were people from over 85 zip codes last week, uh, 3,400 individuals helped, 30,000 pounds of food given away. Uh, it's just extraordinary. I'd just like to thank all the people at St. Mary of the Lake and at the Greater Chicago Food Depository, the tremendous organization uh, that results in uh, this week, I think, 1,500 boxes of food uh, being offered free of charge to residents of Chicago. I'm not a, I'm not a parishioner. I was raised Catholic, um, but not a parishioner here at St. Mary's and decided that, okay, I'm gonna reach out. And he reached out to me and said, hey, I need help with logistics and planning for this. So, you know, I've been thrilled to be able to help and, you know, just feel, uh, you know, thrilled that I'm able to, to loan my time and my, my skills. I mean, I walked away uh, last week on Buena with tears in my eyes, um, you know, honestly, to, to see the number of people that, you know, A, that are in need, but B, that we're able to help is, is amazing. And, you know, I've been able to recruit a number of friends that are also interested. So I, I just, it's great to see that there's people that really do want to come together and serve those who really need it. Um, it's heartwarming. If people are in need of help or if they would like to be a part of the response, they can go to the Food Depository's website, which is www.chicagosfoodbank.org. Once you go there, if you're in need of food, you can hit find food and find a local organization that is going to be distributing food. So we hope that people will join in the response and go to chicagosfoodbank.org. Something that is very unique about this food pantry in that we specifically targeted the message to the, uh, to the immigrant community. We're not asking for documentation. We're not asking for anything. All we want to do is help them. Uh, so people should not be afraid to reach out for help. Uh, people trust us. They trust the church to be a partner with them in their time of need. And because of that, it is not a new thing. The Catholic Church in this country uh, has always had the trust of immigrants. At one point, it was the Irish immigrants, and uh, you know, during the pandemic of 1917, it was German immigrants, it was Italian immigrants. Now it happens to be Latino immigrants, and they continue to trust the church because the church continues to walk with them. Cardinal, that's an amazing thing that that parish is doing. Yes, I'm not surprised. You know, Father Manny Durantes is a, a, a fine priest and, and knows how to ex exercise great leadership and inspire people. And that's being replicated in many of our other parishes as well across Chicagoland. 
Uh, the other thing that we have to keep in mind too is that we have priests on the front line who are uh, administering the sacrament of uh, anointing of the sick uh, to those who are dying. Uh, those 24 priests who step forward to volunteer have reached out to over 200 people in this time and be, been a very uh, great source of consolation to families. Wow, uh, I, think it's, I think it's particularly notable that those 24 priests, they were, um, they volunteered, they were uh, suggested, and then they were trained to minister only to the COVID-19 patients. That's right, and they're also cooperating with healthcare personnel at the various hospitals so that we make sure that uh, everyone really is kept in the loop and, uh, and we keep everyone safe. So the food pantry is a good example. The priests who minister to those who are sick is a good example. What other ways are parishes stepping up in the middle of this pandemic? Well, you know, uh, this uh, time of isolation is really uh, very hard on people who live alone and uh, families who are trying to, in some way, keep their children focused on their studies. So our pastors have been doing telephone outreaches uh, to our parishioners. Uh, for the first time, parishioners are getting a call from their pastor to see how they're doing. Uh, but there are also ways in which we're making sure that uh, we keep uh, our finger on the pulse of what the needs of real people are at this time, uh, especially if they have experienced uh, illness and death in the family. The pastors have been really very heroic and keeping close to their people. Uh, as the Holy Father said, these are priests who know the smell of the sheep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. And, and of course, our own Catholic Charities has stepped up as well. Right, and uh, time and again, I think that uh, we have to remember that Catholic Charities helps the church put its best foot forward. Uh, we have so many different programs, being the largest uh, social service provider in the state, uh, in a myriad of ways, uh, take care of the needs of people at all ages and all faiths. They have done so much, so much for the people, not just, not just the Catholic people either. That's right. Uh, we're here to really be of service to society. Uh, the church, uh, as the Holy Father again has told us, has to be a uh, field hospital where we go to those who are wounded. And Catholic Charities uh, really gives us that capacity to carry out that mission. Hey, Cardinal, speaking of Catholic Charities, a well-respected university dean and internationally recognized management leader has been named Chief Executive Officer of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese. Her name is Sally Blount. We have a video, a portion of her self-introduction to the staff, clients, and contributors to Catholic Charities. We're gonna take a look at that. Great. So why have I taken the job? Because it gives me the opportunity to more explicitly live my faith and to use my gifts to build up the church. I love fundraising. I love building teams. I love working with organizations to help them adapt and operate more effectively. And I'm deeply inspired by Charity's mission. As Catholics, we're called into community to promote human flourishing, to celebrate the sacredness of each life, to care for the vulnerable, we believe that the quickening of the Holy Spirit that we experience as disciples of Jesus uniquely equips us to hear and answer God's call for mercy and charity. The call is not simply to collect money to house and feed those in need. The call is to transform their suffering and thereby transform hearts, both of those who receive and of those who give. And that's going to be our goal over the months and years to come to transform hearts as we ask each day, God, how can we help? Cardinal, I have not yet met Sally Blount. Tell us about her. Well, she's a woman of faith, but also an individual who is so recognized for her uh, abilities and capacity to be a change management individual for any institution. Uh, she's also known to a lot of our priests because she headed up a program uh, that uh, helped our priests uh, acquire the skills of business and management as they lead their parishes. Uh, so many of oh, wow. yeah, so many of our priests over the years, uh, of course, know theology and the scriptures, uh, prepared for ministry, but they're asked to take on enormous uh, responsibilities in a parish, uh, sometimes in a multi-million dollar organization that has a school as well as a church. Uh, she has helped uh, 
uh, honed the skills of many of our pastors through a program at the Kellogg School of Business. And so she's well known to us, well known to me, uh, not only for her expertise, but for being a woman of deep faith. Oh, wow. So that's quite a, quite a uh, list of credentials for her. It is. We're looking forward to uh, her taking the lead. And um, she's also an individual, I think, that will uh, attract many other people to Catholic Charities simply because she's so well known and so well respected. Well, welcome to her. It's great to have her as part of the Archdiocesan family. Cardinal, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way we do many things, not the least of which is education. We want to take a moment to highlight some of the creativity being shown by our Catholic school educators and teachers. say haiku um, haikus are fun poems they're short they're not very long and then they're the thing with haikus is that you have to count the syllables or the parts of the words remember when we counted syllables you can clap it out or you can put your hand under your chin to count how many times your chin goes down so like in the word weather put your hand under weather your chin goes down two times so weather has two syllables in it. So a haiku is made up of three lines. The first line has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables. And the third line has five syllables again. Here's a short story what I did last week. I was either doing work or I was sleeping counting sheep. Spiritual fitness is important, but more important is practicing your faith. You want to get to heaven, practice your faith. You want to get better at music, basketball, sports, education, practice. Practice makes perfect. Wow, Cardinal. Teaching online, a talent show online, even a choir online. That's, that's making the most out of the technology we have now. Well, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> and they've made they've 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 uh, made good use of them. That's true, and um, it's so good to see young people participating in this. Uh, not only do all these efforts keep up their spirits, but they uh, raise our spirits too. They do, and and Dr. Jim Rigg and our um, teachers in the Catholic schools they have done they have done so well in responding to the schools shut down and uh, and and doing all they can to continue learning for our Catholic students without question. And so many of our teachers, our staff, and others, but also parents at home are working hard to help uh, the education continue. Uh, this can't be a permanent solution. We have to make sure that students come back. Uh, and we're looking at ways in which that can happen. Uh, but I think that uh, in the meantime, uh, it's, uh, it really is worth saying uh, congratulations and thanks to so many people who are making this online e-learning uh, possible. Most definitely. Cardinal, in the midst of all of this, I mean, the bottom line is the church and her schools and her parishes have not been shut down by, uh, completely by this pandemic all over the schools have stepped up parishes have uh, the, what they're offering their parishioners and even on the archdiocesan level what uh, what the various uh, agencies of the diocese are doing we have online 
prayer groups. We have online book clubs. We have uh, telephone prayer lines, prayer chat that's, that, that the Archdiocese has, has set up. So many ways that we're reaching out and trying to engage uh, the faithful. Well, in fact, every day I'm on uh, the internet through different uh, mechanisms for meetings, uh, for audio and visual meetings with staff. Uh, so it's true, the archdiocese, our churches, our schools are not closed or shut down. The, building, no, the buildings no. are, but the church is not. <laughs> but the buildings are, but the church is not. That's a great, a great line, a great, a great image. Say, listen, if you need to, I have a great BBC article on how to get over Zoom exhaustion if, if it wears too much on you in those moments. All right, well, <laughs> we have other mechanisms as well, so we can hop from one to the other. Right, right. Uh, Cardinal, perhaps the biggest adjustment that people of faith have been asked to make is not being able to attend Mass in person. But priests across the archdiocese have been celebrating Mass online, as we were just talking. And our television team has been providing online Masses weekdays from St. James Chapel at the Quigley Center and Sunday Masses in English, Spanish, and Polish from Holy Name Cathedral. We have a video collection of some of those. We're going to take a look at that. Good. So as the COVID-19 crisis started, we were kind of called in uh, last minute to see if we could help out and possibly put together uh, a, a mass that we could put out to the internet so people, because people weren't going to be able to go at all. So we kind of scrambled everything we could together, grabbed multiple cameras and all the equipment we needed to come over to the cathedral and coordinate with their staff uh, and tape the first one. Uh, within a couple of days, we kind of put a, a plan together to kind of go forward with not just the weekend masses, but the daily masses. And on the weekends, we were doing multiple languages as well. Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. As people are at home, uh, they don't have access to the churches, at least they can connect us with spiritually. And it's important, even though they cannot receive Eucharist, but they can receive uh, Jesus' spiritual uh, communion. Uh, as they uh, are watching, as they are connecting with people. But also there's a great uh, ministry for priests who are home or don't have live streaming masses or pre-recorded masses to get connected with people as well. I've come to appreciate the importance of these online masses and receiving many, many cards and letters from people who are watching. And I think that what they're saying is that they feel united at home uh, praying it there with the family members, but also they feel a sense of unity among ourselves as the church in Chicago, as they pray with me and knowing that so many other people are watching uh, this televised mass on ABC. I think it's important for people to feel that connection in this time in which we're distance. And if we can continue to do that in a way that allows us to reach out to people and give them a sense of community, even in this virtual way, that has great value. Being the person that gets to sit in the control room uh, for almost all of these and seeing on the live stream of the way that people right. respond to the masses, they'll say a peace be you know, with your spirit or you know, pray for my, my sister who's very sick or pray for my uncle who's in the hospital or pray for my family. Um, it's an unbelievably rewarding experience. It really gets you excited to get out of bed in the morning and uh, get to work so you can do this for everybody that needs it. People love it, especially people who are from our archdiocese that we provide uh, the message in three different languages. I think that's awesome that we can connect to everybody, not just to one group. But during these difficult moments, we are showing May the people Almighty we are one, God one archdiocese, all of you in the name of the Father, uh, one people, and also the Son, uh, we are all in this Spirit. together. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's give a special thanks to ABC7 for televising our Sunday English language mass at 9:30 in the morning. Univision for televising our Spanish Mass at 10 a.m., and Pole Vision for airing our Polish Mass every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And you can always find our Masses online at archchicago.org. So all of those Masses, uh, Cardinal, uh, the way that, that, par that pastors are reaching out, the way that you do every Sunday, uh, that provides such a comfort to the faithful who cannot be there in person. I know that firsthand by the number of letters and cards that I'm receiving, it's really quite overwhelming uh, that really? people are saying how consoling it is. And I'm also heard uh, from the folks of the different t TV stations that 
they, they find that the viewership is very strong and uh, that really encourages me. Do you find it difficult to celebrate Mass in an empty church, but knowing that people are, will be watching you? Yes, it's very hard to speak to a camera. Uh, and, but you have to imagine that there are people behind it uh, who are watching. And uh, so you have to uh, bring yourself into their own family situations, their own homes, and know that uh, as they're watching, uh, they're doing so uh, with a great devotion to our Lord uh, to celebrate uh, the presence of the Lord on Sunday, uh, especially in this Easter season. Yeah, and, and I still, even now in the sixth week of Easter, I still um, find it very profound. On Easter Sunday, your Mass celebrated, you paused in the front of the church and you acknowledged the missing people. Um, and, and they miss the, the Mass and their priests, but you, you priests miss your people too. Well, yes, for me it was very significant because you know the readings for Easter give us only the empty tomb. And so as I looked right. out on the empty church, I realized that that uh, first community of Christians had to have a faith that the Lord was risen uh, just by uh, witnessing to the emptiness of the moment, the emptiness of the tomb. And we, oh, we wow. have to believe as well that the Lord is present uh, even if the church is empty, the church building is empty. Exactly, exactly. Finally, Cardinal, we thought it would be fun to show a clip of you reading the popular children's book, <laughs> Good Night Moon. It was part of the Chicago Public Library's Live from the Library program, featuring notable Chicagoans reading their favorite children's books. Let's watch part of your reading. In the great green room, there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of the cow jumping over the moon. And there were three little bears sitting on chairs. And two little kittens and a pair of mittens. And a little toy house and a young mouse. And a comb and a brush and a bowl full of mush. And a quiet old lady who was whispering, hush. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Cardinal, you're in good company. Oprah and the Obamas also took part in that initiative as well. Well, yes, and I wanted to say something to the little children of that age, but also to the young people who are supposed to receive communion or be confirmed this year. I've done uh, video messages for them and they're uh, accessible at our website, but also messages to uh, young people who are supposed to graduate uh, in ceremonies for eighth grade and high school. I wanted to be close to all young people to let them know that um, the church cares for them. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, I'll just kind of share with you here that uh, from Good Night Moon, my favorite line in that whole book, Good Night Mush. <laughs> Cardinal, thanks so much for joining us from St. Mary of Lake Mundelein Seminary. It was really good to be with you, even this remote. Thank you, good to be with you, and God bless everyone who's watching. Thanks, I'm Todd Williamson. Thank you for watching Catholic Chicago. We invite you to watch segments of Catholic Chicago and hundreds of additional Catholic videos at youtube.com forward slash Catholic Chicago. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter.